This video is brought to you by Knowledge at the Australian School of Business. For more information, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au. If you heard that the Australian taxpayer was going to be spending $3 million luring an American to come to Australia, you might actually be wondering what the value for Australia is. But it's Oprah at the Opera House. The Opera House, of course, is one of the iconic buildings of the 20th century. It's a symbol not just for a city, but also for a country that's a continent. It's a symbol for Australia. And the visitor is Oprah Winfrey. She presents a chat show in America. She's going to be coming here presenting three of those programs in Australia and Tourism Australia hopes that by coming to Australia millions more Americans are going to see those images of Australia on their screen and they're going to be following. Looking at the issue is Larry Dwyer, a professor of tourism at the Australian School of Business. So Larry, I've really got to ask, what is the benefit of Oprah coming to Australia? Well, I don't know if you uh, saw the actual television show that Oprah had, where she, Oprah had when she announced the, uh, that she was taking the whole audience to Australia. Uh, they went berserk. They were, they were just absolutely delighted and dancing and so on. And so already there's an awareness of Australia generated from that show. But what happens is that this is a particularly interesting marketing event. Unlike advertisements that might be placed on, say, New York television and so on, or in a magazine, which are almost one-off occurrences, this is being marketed both before the event, it will be marketed during the event, and it will be marketed after the event. The, the women in the audience uh, will promote and market Australia to their friends and relatives. And interestingly, Oprah, who is an opinion leader, and especially to women, is the perfect person to be able to launch this event. I mean, she only has to mention a novel that she's read, and it becomes a bestseller. And she is marketing Australia. And so I would see there'd be enormous marketing benefits. And then when the event occurs, of course, it will be uh, shown apparently now, it's going to be two episodes here and one episode somewhere else unnamed around Australia. And so people will be traveling around Australia, Australia will be marketed and so on. And then of course, these shows go to air. Again, fantastic marketing publicity for Australia. Dollars couldn't buy that sort of marketing publicity. And of course, after the event, people will be on their Facebooks and talking about it and so on. So in marketing terms, it is a marketer's dream. It almost seems like one of those classic bits of marketing of you tell somebody before the event what you're actually going to be doing. You actually have the event itself and then you have the social media afterwards that's going to be discussing it again. So you repeat it three separate times. You keep on telling people, but unfortunately at a dreadful time. Of course, Australian tourism does have the major problem at the moment that the Australian dollar is up at record levels. Surely they must be cursing the fact that they're actually having this program right now when Americans must be looking at the cost of coming over here and it's costing them a lot more. Yeah, well, it may be that uh the timing is fortuitous. Uh, you're quite right that the uh, Australian dollar is very high and that deters uh, tourism to Australia. Americans though have always regarded Australia as a dream destination. The problem is we're very high on what's called their consideration set. When we ask Americans which countries they'd like to go to, Australia is always ranked very highly. But they regard the distance as daunting. And maybe, just maybe, uh, with the attractions that Australia has that are demonstrated in the show, it might overcome America's reluctance to do it. In terms of the exchange rate, it works doubly against Australia. One is that inbound tourism is lower because of it. It also boosts outbound tourism. And Australians are going outbound in record numbers. And that's hurting the domestic tourism industry. And it may be that the Oprah bandwagon effect might help domestic tourism because Australians might get a better appreciation of their tourism product and if that's the case Australian domestic tourism will benefit and after all it's 75 percent of all our revenues are generated by domestic tourism. It's almost sort of a novel marketing exercise. It's something that hasn't really been tried before, bringing over the entire TV show and trying it here. How imperative is it for Australia to actually try these new marketing techniques? Well, I think this is uh, a very good one. Uh, I think for far too long, 
we've been locked into the traditional ways of marketing where you market on a television shows or newspapers and magazines and so on. But as you say, uh, this, uh, this event is almost self-marketing. And the word of mouth effect is uh, increasingly recognised by marketers as an extremely important effect. And of course, if you have an opinion leader like Oprah uh, you know, promoting Australia, that's all to our benefit. But of course, Australia may be a dream destination, the sort of first or second on the list of locations that actually want to go to. But it's rather harder to actually put it into reality, isn't it? To actually force people to come here. Mm. Well, you can't. And uh, what you've got to do is give them a product that they'll value. And I think for far too long, Australia has relied on its natural attractions and, and varied wildlife and so on. I think the message is, is getting out there that in an increasingly competitive world where governments and uh, the tourism operators overseas are putting more and more effort into adding value to their tourism products and services, Australia must do the same. So what we've got to do is to ensure a range of goods and services, a mix of products that can give tourists valued experiences and if they do have valued experiences they will then go home, they'll promote the destination, they'll repeat visit and Australia will then gain more tourist numbers in the future. Uh, and recently we've had criticism as well of some of the Australian marketing campaigns from, from the 1990s and 2000s. The Where the Bloody Hell Are You campaign, for example, uh, it's recently been described as uh, really $180 million that we'll never see again and didn't generate that much extra tourism. Even the adverts were, were uh, actually taken down uh, in several places around the world where the slogan that of course is well known here just didn't translate abroad. How important is it to make sure your, your slogans as well translate? Well, I think, I think it's absolutely crucial and the problem with uh, Australia's marketing effort, it's been sending out mixed messages. I mean a number of years ago there was uh, a marketing strategy in the white paper which was developed by government and by industry that uh, wanted to promote Australia as a platinum tourism destination, that is a high yield destination. So what do they do after that? they have uh, where the bloody hell are you, which, which then reaches down to a lower level. And then of course with the movie Australia, then there was a movement upwards towards a more sophisticated and let's say perhaps wealthier type of, uh, of customer. So what's been happening is that the world's been getting all these mixed messages. Hopefully as a result of such as the opera uh, event and so on, we may get a much clearer idea of what the rest of the world values because after all, if we can understand what the rest of the world values, we can attempt to give them the type of product that they do. Yeah. And finally, how can we actually measure the value that the Australian taxpayer is getting out of this? Is this a question of just looking at, say, Australian tourism websites and seeing if there is an increase in, in people searching for it from America? Or is there, there any other way of saying, yes, extra value was generated by this visit? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's various marketing uh, strategies to determine this, and one would be hits on the internet and so on. At the end of the day, what counts are numbers coming in. And as an economist, I have to say, it's certainly not just about numbers, it's about how much they spend. The problem though is you're never quite sure just what the catalyst was for a visit, but you can certainly determine if there is a, an increase in Australian tourism uh, following this type of event, and I think most commentators expect that there will be. Certainly I'm sure many people looking at the Australian economy hope that there is. Professor Larry Dwyer, thank you for coming to this wonderful location of the Opera House and good to talk to you. Thank you very much. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at the Australian School of Business, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au.